Welcome to Lesson 6. These are the foundations for the three songs, Can Can, Deck the Halls, and Mississippi Sawyer. Mississippi Sawyer is another fiddle song. Can Can is a classical song. A lot of people know it, and they've heard it before. And, of course, they're another Christmas song, a one of six that you can find here among the 36 songs. So the foundations for Lesson 6 are very similar to Lesson 5. It's almost like we're going to uh, get a chance to take our breath here. Introducing eighth notes is a huge deal. Hundreds and hundreds of songs use half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes. And so becoming fluent in this uh, level is very, very valuable. One thing that I can suggest for those of you who are looking for a way to push your playing forward a little bit faster is to do something I've suggested for my students for many years. Find a song that you really like and then play it each day seeing how fast you can play it. So pushing the envelope of speed helps to solidify your technique in ways that nothing else really does, you know. So some songs are just meant to be played at one tempo or a very narrow uh, range of speeds. But fiddle songs and certain classical songs, particularly the ones that are perpetual motion, it's the same rhythm over and over and over again, those lend themselves to, okay, well, how fast can I do that today? Now, you want to be accurate with them and don't get sloppy, right? But you can push yourself. Can-can is uh, one. In fact, when it's performed, sometimes it's slow and then medium and then fast and then super fast. They'll do it. They'll repeat it. It's such a short song. They'll repeat it and repeat it faster each time. A fiddle song is just kind of built to do that. Some of them are just built to play faster and faster. And so you can have some fun with that if you're looking for a way to uh, get your playing um, better sooner. All right. So let's jump into the scale. We have our G scale, just like before. We're going to hold out the whole notes, starting to play legato. You're connecting the bottom of the notes. You do the thumb under just like before, okay? And you want to play your F sharp. And then we're going to come back down, okay? So whole notes, half notes, quarters, and eighth notes two times. All right, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four. 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 Sometimes when I'm working with a student, that fastest speed is just too fast to do. So what I ask them to do is, well, show me the fastest speed that you can do comfortably. And then however fast that is, we call those eighth notes. And then we go twice as slow for quarters, twice as slow for half notes, right? And, and so we work backwards. You don't have to force yourself to try to play 
faster that you, than you can in this foundation. But I promise you, if you will go through this routine, you're going to help develop the ability to play faster sooner than if you just do it randomly. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in lesson 7 through 12. Specific things that you do inside your brain, with your hands, with your arms, so that playing fast feels comfortable. Okay? All right, on to the echo. So we have that gap of three beats before you repeat, and I'll kind of count you in. So you listen first, and then you play. The double bar that you see separates the different echoes. So we only have six echoes here, and you'll notice the left hand is doing half notes now. But other than that, we're still on the same notes as we did last uh, lesson in lesson five. All right, so you listen first, and then you repeat what you hear, okay? Two, ready, play. Play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Okay, and now we want to do our do re mi, our solfege. I play first, and then you can sing back with me, or you can sing inside your head. Ready, sing. Do, do, re, fa, mi, re, so. Re, 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 fa, mi, re, do. Do, mi, re, do, mi, re, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, re, mi, fa. Re mi fa re mi re do. Fa re mi fa mi re do. And so from here, we go to the jam. If you're seeing this for the first time, let me just share with you that the jam on the music is really just intended to get you started. A jam is where jazz musicians or bluegrass players get together and they'll make stuff up on top of chord charts, usually. And so what we're going to do is we don't worry about our chord charts, but what we do is we get, grab onto a pattern, a rhythmic pattern, and uh, start to make up different little chunks of music sometimes called motives, one right after another. And the idea is that you get into the flow. When the rhythm stays the same, the feeling of the music is going to start to come out. It's not always that way because you have some music that is completely out of time. For our purposes, to learn to play songs, we want to be able to play steady in time. And this stopping and starting disturbs the flow of the music so much that learning to play steady becomes like the most important thing uh, once you can figure out what the melody sounds like. 
so the jam is a way of getting into a groove and going at a set steady speed. The beauty of it is you get to decide how fast you play. So you don't even have to go as fast as I do. You don't have to necessarily play what I do. It's just this is an example to get you started. All right. And what I generally do is I'll take that rhythm idea and I play it on the notes of a scale. So I don't have to choose which notes I'm going to play. For some people, that's like brand new. And you can go right, right up the scale notes um, using the rhythm. And that's uh, one of the things that I do in the jam. If you start to notice, oh, he's always playing one measure of the first note of the scale and one measure of the second note of the scale. I do that on purpose just to kind of take out the variables and let you get into the flow of the beats going and the music flowing forward. Very much like an escalator or a mountain stream. You know, the feeling is in the flow. And so the jam gives you a chance to live there enough so it feels normal, right? And it's really important to learn to do that, to, to remember things and to play things well. So let's see what our jam has in store for us. Um, so the first one, uh, two quarter notes and four eighth notes sounds like this. And from there, you could go on and add whatever you want. Now, the second three measures of that top line, same rhythm, but now I have this different pattern. And you'll see the pattern goes up by step. Okay, lots of songs do that. They have, usually they'll like do one thing, They'll repeat it exactly, and then the third time they have this little variation. And you can use that formula when you're making up your, your jams. So let's take a look at the next line. That's a dotted figure, dotted quarter note with an eighth note. Sounds like this. Okay, and then the fourth one, which is the last three measures there, same rhythm pattern and with the different notes. Okay, so if you take those four examples and you learn to do them independently and they get really automatic pilot, you can fool around with the combinations of the different ones together. You could sit down over time and play for hours and hours, making up your own music based on variations of those four. And the one thing that I won't talk about today here, but if you want to jump into the make your own music um, lesson, especially the recording of lesson five is where I mentioned this for the first time, you learn to change the chord underneath with the left hand. And the right hand just kind of keeps doing the same thing. And the combination of those two things with the presence of those eighth notes and the different speeds of note, it's like this golden land. You can play forever. So let me just give you an example of what I mean. So I'm going to start with the first one. I'll hop to the second one and, and move it around. And then I'm going to start to change the left hand a little bit. And you'll see that this jam of moving forward, right, in combination of making up your own thing, it's not so far away. It's not so uh, um, impossible, right? If you spend a little bit of time with the jam. Okay, so, you know, I tossed a few new things in there. And you'll find over time, this it's kind of this weird thing. You start this pattern and you become fluent in this pattern. 
And then part of you says, well, gosh, I wish there was something more interesting than this. Uh, we need to spice this up a little bit. And then your fingers just accidentally or on purpose go to this new thing and you hang out there for a while and then you get kind of tired of that and you stick something new in. And as you take this from day to day and week to week, you develop this fluency. And uh, just so you know, that ability to do what I just did, um, unlike reading music, which very often if you don't continue to read music and study, you lose the ability to play those songs. You, the note reading falls by the wayside a bit. But this stuff, it's so hardwired in your brain, it's very much like riding a bike. You know, you may be wobbly when you get back on, but you can get back on and you can do this uh, anytime. You know, you just come to the piano and you sit down, you find your key, you get good at like three or four different chords, and you can make up music anytime you feel like uh, for your whole life. Never have to worry about wrong notes. It is this idea that inspired me to bring this uh, piano course to you. The, p the note reading is really important if you want to play with other people. Um, short of that, you know, learning the chords and, uh, and being able to play by ear. It's a lot of different avenues you can go with your music making. And you can learn how to play in this style, sit down to the piano anytime you want, play a song that's brand new right off the top of your head. And it may not be a masterpiece, or it might be. You might want to throw on the recorder so you don't lose it. Uh, but you can do it brand new each day. So I hope you have fun with it. The, uh, the next bit is the song Cypher. These are specific things that apply to the three songs in Lesson 6. And if you look at the, this bit here coming up, uh, it can save you some time so you don't struggle with the things that are new. All right? All right, let's look at our song cipher. Um, those first two measures, what I'm showing you is this left-hand pattern. That actually has a specific name that's called an Alberti bass. And that's used a lot in um, uh, classical, classical, classical music. Uh, Mozart, Haydn, uh, they use that pattern. And you have a G chord, you have a D chord with F sharp in the bass, right? And those show up in your songs a lot. So I just, I wanted to toss that in here. Um, we have some songs where instead of playing an F or a C natural, which is a white note, you need to be able to play a C sharp, right? So we want to teach the fingers how to the difference between a C natural and a C sharp. So what you see there is half notes and then twice as fast, which I've talked about in lesson five. Super fast way to teach your fingers a very specific thing. Sometimes I'll call this the back and forth exercise. Anyway, it would those middle measures sound like this. Sometimes I'll repeat it, right? The next thing is an extension in the left hand with the uh, completing the chord in the right hand. So G, B, D is your G chord. We take that B, put it on top, and that's sometimes called an open position chord. Super common in songs, worth taking a look at by itself. All right, bottom line, those first two measures, similar idea, back and forth exercise. Okay. And then the next three uh, measures there, what I want you to draw, uh, what I'd like you to do is draw your attention to the left hand. These are sixths. In the lessons, you'll see me talk about intervals and harmony. That's something you can check out on your own. This, that's a sixth. So it's a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. That's the, that's the interval, the distance between. And what we do 
is we honor the notes of the scale, but we go down, we go down, we go down, and we come back up. So it's, it's a little bit like playing a scale, but you have to be able to move your hand one note down and keep the pattern. So your hand makes like this cookie cutter thing. Your fingers are a little stiff, right? They keep the distance between, and they're just moving down the notes and back up, right? And then a special melody because that's what happens in the song. This is from Deck the Halls, by the way. One more time. Now twice as fast. Okay, so in some songs, the hard bit is a little more extended. Let's say it's two measures. Here's an example of that. And what you do is you take those two measures, you turn everything into a half note, and then you do twice as fast. I really can't say how much quicker a person learns when they take a hard part, break it down into half notes, and then learn to play it twice as fast. You teach your muscles how to release and let go so that they aren't all tense. And then you also teach the ear to hear exactly what's going on. You'd be amazed at how many hard bits in a song. The reason you can't play them is because you really can't hear them. So if you slow it down, and you know, quite frankly, I have students who try to play things and they don't even know what they're looking at. They, they don't know where those notes are. So if you slow it down, you figure out where the notes are, you play it steady in time, you teach the muscles how to move, when to move, you do it twice as fast, because when you can do things faster, it locks it in better, and then you're done. And uh, I'd say, you know, in the neighborhood of 70% of all the hard bits can be solved just by that alone. And I have to force myself to slow down uh, to, to do that sometimes. I'm playing, I'm playing, playing, I get so excited about playing it, you know, I forget that the that to save myself a bunch of time and effort, if I just sh teach my hand to do the half quarter thing, the back and forth exercise, I won't have to spend five days learning it. I'll learn it in like two days, or I'll learn it in like 20 seconds. Um, so I, I'm slowing myself down all the time, reminding myself that the quickest way to learn a song is to actually do that. And, you know, I'm preparing music for um, my church job, for uh, performances all the time. And because there's so much music to learn, I have to be efficient. And playing in a symphony uh, violin um, taught me that. So anyway, that's why we do that. And it's not random. Works like a charm. Really does. All right. Last little bit. In this song, you have, uh, you know, it's like the song goes along and then you need one more note underneath. So what we do is we, do, we cross the second finger over, but we keep the thumb. Okay, so that's what that last bit is. To teach your hand how to measure going over and then coming right back. Because that's, that's a new pattern. All right. Hope you found that uh, helpful. I just love this part of the lessons, and I appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Take care.